During our forensic investigation, we uncovered disturbing evidence, graphic images, and videos depicting crimes being committed. It was during this examination that we learned we needed to act swiftly to remove the suspect, Stefan Stearns, from our streets. Despite the arrest, our investigation into her di disappearance remained ongoing. We understand the importance of thoroughly exploring every lead and piece of evidence. The Kissimmee Police Department, along with other law enforcement agencies in Central Florida, continue their search for Madeline for the next several days following her disappearance, and we turn to the public for help. During this time, our investigators combed through a significant number of tips, and on March 1st, we received information placing Stern's vehicle in a rural area of St. Cloud, where ultimately Madeline's body was discovered. <clears throat> we are all deeply saddened by the outcome of Madeline's disappearance. The Kissimmee Police Department continues to piece together the timeline leading up to the events that occurred. I want to address some questions we are receiving from the media in everyone's effort to keep the community up to date on this tragedy. At this time, Stearns is facing a total of 60 charges related to our investigation. This includes sexual battery, lewd and lascivious molestation, and unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. These charges reflect the meticulous work of our law enforcement community. Our detectives also are working closely with the state's attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit and the medical examiner's office on the investigation. Death investigations are complex. Tasks like forensic analysis and thorough interviews are crucial and require careful attention. It is vital to address these misconceptions in the pursuit of justice while preserving the integrity to the case. During our investigation, excuse me, during an investigation such as this one, we gather additional information from individuals close to the deceased. Each person interviewed is treated as involved until proven otherwise. This is a standard protocol to ensure all the facts are uncovered. During our investigation, we have interviewed many individuals. Each interview has been vital to our understanding of the case. We are reviewing all of the information we received and are following up on every lead. Attention to detail and the diligence are the most important aspects of this investigation. We are committed to transparency and will provide updates when possible. Madeline's story has touched the hearts of many. Rest assured, our department is diligently working on the investigation. And while we appreciate the public's interest, we must prioritize the, pub the integrity of the investigation. We appreciate your support and understanding as we gather the facts. We intend to release additional information in the future, providing more details that we do not compromise the ongoing investigation. We vow to do everything in our power to ensure Madeline's memory is honored with justice. Our detectives are dedicated to pursuing every lead, uncovering every fact, and holding those responsible accountable. Now I will open it up for any questions. Steve, I have a question. Um, we know that you're working behind the scenes during this investigation to make sure everything is in order, but what can you tell us new today that we don't already know? Um, I don't have anything new that you don't already know other than our detectives are working tirelessly day in and day out to ensure, you know, all the facts are uncovered in this investigation. Chief Holland, is, is the mother a suspect or a person of interest in this investigation? And also with the videos that you uncovered, is there any evidence of the mother's involvement on any of these videos? So everyone that was close to Madeline is considered suspect until we have proven otherwise. Chief, how close are we able to know what actually happened to Madeline Soto? Well, you know, this is a very sensitive and, um, you know, it's, it's very intricate. We want to make sure that we uncover every single fact and all the evidence before, you know, we don't want to put a timeline on it, basically, you know, because the detectives are very meticulous in what they do, and we want to be sure that everything is uncovered that possibly can. Chief, can you release any information about the manner in which Maddie died at this point? No, ma'am. We are still waiting on the medical examiner's report. Chief, do you believe Maddie was killed inside of the family's home or somewhere else? We're still uncovering all of those details. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that until we have the facts. Chief, can you tell us, tell us if Stephen Stearns acted alone in all of this? 
we're still uncovering all the evidence. I don't want to speculate whether he was or not. Um, we will wait until the investigation, you know, is completed to make that determination. As Stephen Sturz said, he acted as active a loner. What has he said in interviews with you? Since he, we know he's in jail. He, yes. What has he told you about other people's involvement, if any? He has invoked his right to a lawyer, so we have not spoke with him. Is there any time that you can expect an update for us? The public is asking every single day, and we understand that you're working on the investigation, but we would like to give them something. I, I don't want to rush my detectives. I think it's paramount that they take their time. And, you know, Mr. Stearns is not going anywhere. You know, he's in jail and he's going to be there for a while. So my detectives, you know, I want them to be, you know, just look at every single detail and make sure. Um, but I don't want to give a timeline at this point. Chief, you mentioned you're working closely with the medical examiner. Um, what does that relationship kind of look like and what information are they able to release to you before that exam is completed? So, not really. Um, I wouldn't say that they've released an information. We depend on the medical examiner's report for our our report. So we're going to have to wait until they release that report. Do you believe there are any additional victims? Uh, no. It appears that this all was isolated to the home. Chief, I'm still trying to get a sense of things. Do you still feel like you have more questions than answers at this point? I think our questions are being answered slowly but surely. Um, you know, for the integrity of the investigation, we have to, you know, keep things close um, until such time as we hold those accountable for her death. Chief, do you feel like this is taking longer than it should because Stearns is not speaking? No, I just think that, you know, sometimes these investigations are just very lengthy. Um, we know that he is in jail and he is not going anywhere. So the detectives are just making sure they cross their eye or cross the T's and dot their eyes. You know, they, they want to put together, you know, a foolproof investigation. Chief, is the mother and the family members being cooperative and answering questions? Have they lawyered up? And also the father of Madeline, who is not a Florida resident, is he a part of this investigation or at least being asked questions? We have interviewed... Um, you know, all those family members that are close. Uh, mother has cooperated. She did give us an interview. Um, so there's, you know, no one is is not cooperating other than Stearns. We know that the crimes were committed in the home. We also have, you know, the date of birth of the person, but we have not confirmed that that is Madeline Soto. Would you be able to confirm that information? Right. So all of the charges are with uh, children under the age of 18 and, you know, they are protected. Their identity is protected under the law. So it's going to expect, uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Nobody is charged for the murders. Madeline, nobody knows exactly what happened to Madeline. We can expect in the couple of days someone going to face charge for the murder of Madeline Soto? When the detectives put their case together, you know, like I said before, they want to ensure their investigation is tight. We're working, you know, hand in hand with the state attorney's office to ensure, you know, every piece of evidence is revealed and uncovered. So I can't put a timeline on when that might be. And Chief, with his cell phone, there's one thing I understand here. So he originally went to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. At least that's what we understand. He gave the cell phone to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff's office then found something on his phone which led to an arrest. In the arrest affidavit from Kissimmee PD, it says he offered his phone freely to Kissimmee PD. Can you kind of explain how that happened? Because I just have a tough time understanding how somebody who's been arrested for something on his phone freely gives a phone up again. Well, I don't know the intricate details of, I do know that the Orange County Sheriff's Office and Kissimmee Police Department were working hand in hand, you know, uh, during, you know, the, um, the actual disappearance investigation. So I don't want to speak on exactly how that happened, but it's not uncommon for us to ask um, someone if they want to, you know, give up their phone. Chief, is there anything in particular that keeps you up at night regarding this case? Well, a lot of things keep me up at night. Um, you know, m my takeaway from this is talk to your children, families, talk to your kids. Um, know that there are our um, agencies out there, the abuse hotline, help now, you know, that people can report suspicion to. And I would encourage mothers and fathers to have those conversations with the kids and, uh, and be aware. So that's that's question. Last question. Last question. Cool. Had you guys investigated this family before? Not for anything like this, no ma'am. I'm sorry, can we just confirm how long that relationship was, the mother and the stepfather? 
that is still um, being under investigation. We're trying to get the timeline for that. Chief, I have one more question. Thank this you. is a case that uh, became really big um, out of nowhere for a lot of people, but what has the department learned through all of this so far? Well, this was a very tragic event. Um, you know, I think that, like I said earlier, it's up, up to us, up to each family member to have those conversations with your kids and report any suspicion of abuse um, to your school resource officer, to, uh, you know, an adult that's a trusted adult, um, to any police officer that's out there. So just report it and let the law enforcement community um, investigate. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Police Chief Holland there in Kissimmee, Florida, giving us a little bit of an update at least on this Madeline Soto case that we have been following very closely here at Court TV. She was reported missing on February 26th and then her body was found just days later, 13 years old. We were thinking that maybe we would hear about some charges. So no charges yet in connection with the death of Madeline Soto, but as you just heard, Police Chief Holland, she was talking about the prime suspect in this case, Stephen Stearns, the mother of Madeline Soto, her boyfriend. He is already behind bars, booked on 60 counts of sexual battery of a child. I wanna bring in our guest for this hour, National Trial Attorney and Supreme Court Attorney Megan Whiteside, and still with us in studio, Matt Johnson. Matt, I do wanna start with you first, because you've done a lot of research on this story. You've been covering it. Let's talk about her mom. Chief Holland was saying that everyone is a suspect that is close to Madeline. We've talked to everyone. Mom is cooperating. What do we know about her mom? That was the bombshell. That was the big takeaway from this news conference when it was just going to be an update to the community saying basically we are still investigating. We welcome anyone with any information to still come forward. But the big takeaways here was the fact that the mom is still not ruled out as a suspect. She is cooperating, doing interviews, but could stay, face charges down the road. The other takeaways is the the fact that we don't know the cause of death um, because they are waiting on the medical examiner's report and also Stearns lawyered up and he's not talking or cooperating whatsoever. Yeah, Matt, she said that everyone is cooperating except Stearns because mm -hmm. he's lawyered up. And obviously he has a right to do so, but obviously a lot of us just want some answers here yeah. in this very tragic case. Do you want to bring in our guest, uh, Megan? You still with us? Megan, I want to talk yes. with you. What are your takeaways from the news conference? Well, it sounds like the Kissimmee Police Department and everyone at that crime lab is working overtime. This may seem slow to the public, but this investigation seems to be a priority and the processing of forensic evidence takes time. And so the, it's not unusual that the medical examiner is not done and the official report is not yet released. And the medical examiner may be waiting on other forensic information and other investigative information. We can expect that DNA analysis is going through. That takes time at the crime lab. Um, and we know that the police at least has some surveillance footage. They most likely are trying to investigate other sources of surveillance footage to put together a timeline, both for the victim and the defendant here. And so once the medical examiner's cause of death is released, that will give a little bit more information. But really, we want the, the police department and the crime lab to take the time necessary to process the evidence so that that can guarantee a just prosecution. Exactly, Megan. And, and they probably just wanted to have a news conference because so many people in the media have been wanting answers in this case. So they thought they'd give a little bit of an update as to exactly what's taking place here. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you've been boots on the ground reporter as well. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're call, constantly calling for updates and they're like, we'll do a news conference. We'll try to answer whatever questions we can, but we don't really have an update to release just yet on our own. So that's what this was. Exactly.